Recently, I published a domain of mine calling it impossible. Within 13 hours, it was cracked by MTGamer25, whose solution video can be found in the description. But as of this upload, it has over 900 attempts and less than 1% completion rate. Now, this isn't a dodge all sorts of craziness domain. There's only one part where things can hurt you. Those that completed it used a variety of characters, including Kuching. As you are about to see, and probably already know because of the title of this video, it can be completed with only free-to-play characters. I'll be using Traveler, Amber, Lisa, and Kaya, but you'll only ever see two of them. It may even be possible to complete with just one character. So Lumine here is scaling this unclimbable wall. It's worth noting that Starfall sword placements are finicky, and each surface in the game seems to come with its own set of rules on how the two interact. This was certainly not a single attempt sweep. What you're seeing here was experimented and practiced to gain some semblance of consistency with Starfell sword placements. You'll be seeing a lot of this. We create a staircase, more or less, before beginning the journey back towards the corner. There's a coin up here we need to get, obstructed from view by a wall. Since we have plenty of time, let's talk about what's going on here. Starfell sword can attach to walls. Because of that, it can be used to scale things that normally cannot be climbed. As mentioned, placement of constructs is finicky, and not all walls are scalable in this same fashion. For instance, sometimes attempting to place a construct will cause it to appear far above, where only a character like Kuching, Venti, or Xiao and his burst jump can reach. We only have Kaya and his sick hops, but that's enough to get the job done here. It's undoubtedly a slow process when done completely free to play. Moving by leaps and bounds between the constructs is still somewhat possible, except when we need to move up. If you've watched a lot of my content, you'll probably have noticed a specific team I use almost all the time that makes traversing in this manner incredibly quick, where the only downtime is the cooldown between skills because a high percentage of construct placements are accessible no matter where they end up. By going under the wall and then climbing up, we can get the coin. And then we continue up, because we're not quite done with scaling walls. The top of this wall is just below the ceiling, so it can be used instead of going around the wall. Next, we journey to the other corner of the room, using the same tactics as before. You could definitely say the Geo Traveler is the key to this whole domain. Their Geo Construct, that can be aimed, even to this day, is a tool unmatched in Genshin Impact. I'd encourage players to experiment with the skill. In a completely literal sense, they will often find themselves able to reach new heights by using Starfell Sword. It can be quite interesting to see just what places can be reached. The second coin is obtained and we glide over to the biggest obstacle for most. The wall covering the door. First glance might make one believe this door is supposed to be glitched through. While that may be possible, I placed an elemental pulse device near it to deter that line of thought. I suppose some may think it just needs to be executed with insane precision and timing. What you really need to do is just place Starfell Sword atop the wall. You'll notice it appears slightly within the wall instead of atop it. This gives us enough room to climb lower than the top of the door and then leap over top it into the hole. It's easy to get stuck here, which almost happened in this run. After dropping down, it's onto the second room. At this point, one would never want to use Exit Freeze. It's an immediate loss if used, and all the wonderful traps on screen are exactly why. It placed the character into the middle of them, and result in a KO before the game even finishes loading. The coin here is bait. Attempt to jump at it almost guarantees a loss, and it's also just high enough that even a tall character cannot reach. 
Shongli's pillar might change that, but it would also put one in harm's way of the pulse device in the hallway. Not recommended. Kuching and Kazuha can steal this coin with their skills, which is the easy route, but this is the free to play route. So we have to brave getting past it and then come back. There's no real logic in the placement of these traps. Truth be told, I spent about 30 minutes tops designing this domain. I just placed some stuff and then struggled until I was able to publish it. Anyways, wrapping around to this corner, we avoid the pulse devices and begin climbing the wall. More tricky placements, but the trickiest are yet to come. Once high enough to reach the coin, it's back into the fray to snatch it before gliding to safety. And now we have reached the most difficult part of the domain, at least for free to play. Scaling this room and reaching the goal that's at the center near the ceiling. This is going to look fast due to it being practiced, but do believe me when I say it took the longest out of all the parts. These are the trickiest of the Starfell sword placements needed, and the northwest corner is the only location I found that works for free to play. These placements are extremely precise, and it may be noticeable that I'm using certain marks on the walls, such as flowers, as guides. Even just being off by a slight amount may cause the Starfell sword to be placed too high or too low. We can walk across the edges of the wall, giving us a place to rest. This tan color where the wall indents is a unique spot where Starfell Sword can be placed at low heights relative to one another, once again like building a staircase. But also again, it's precise, and I messed up a few times. Prior to finding out about the tan wall trick, I attempted to scale using the corner of the room. It was... inconsistent, to put it lightly. After making it past everything to reach this point and failing to scale the room five times, I stopped my attempts and spent nearly two hours searching for the solution being displayed here, and practicing it again and again and again. I guess I do have speedrunner strats when I try. These walls have four sections, divided by the areas of the wall we can walk on. They really are useful for checkpoints, as falling to the bottom at this point would almost guarantee a loss by timeout. Starfall Sword keeps getting placed at an incorrect angle on the corner here. While I managed to make it work for the second section, the third always gave me trouble during practice when it turned out this way. As such, I opted to wait it out. An unfortunate loss of time, but I knew that if I could get the correct angle, I'd be able to progress much easier and save time overall. Those characters mentioned earlier, Kuching, Venti, and the one-time burst form of Xiao, speed up any such Starfall sword strategies astronomically. It wouldn't be surprising if one could make it from the floor to the goal in this room within a minute by using them. But as free-to-play, Slow and steady is how we'll win this race. Now that we're near the top, we return to the corner. Again using markers on the wall for placement. And then placing one more on this wall over here. We've reached the ceiling and can glide over. Catch the, wind. the end. And there you have it. The 100% free to play run that resulted in the impossible domain getting published. The domain ID is in the description if you'd like to give it a go yourself. I don't really recommend doing it free to play given the frustration involved. But if you insist, 
Godspeed. This is Musashi, signing off. Till next time.